Hello everyone and welcome back to A Wild Approach. In this video, I just want to give you all a short little tour of the crepe myrtle bed and the black cherry tree. These two areas are kind of in the middle of the garden. Um, the black cherry tree is actually on the west side of the garden and then the crepe myrtle bed is right here as you can see in the very center of the garden. Now a crepe myrtle is not a native plant. I actually planted this with my mom before I really knew much at all about native plants and how important they were. I didn't really know that crepe myrtles weren't native. I just saw them growing all along my area. Like I just saw that they did well so we planted it and it was like a seven dollar tree it was dormant when i bought it it was super cheap and when i planted it it was a stick basically and it looked dead but i figured i only invested seven bucks into it so we'll see what happens and it's been growing really well and i will say that um even though it's not native um it doesn't seem to be invasive. I'll just have to keep an eye on that, see if that changes. Um, it has beautiful fall color most of the time. Uh, the fall color can actually change year to year. And it is giving me like a really pretty structural element, um, a vertical structural element that I really like. I really like the way that the trunk is. but. If I have to pick between the black cherry tree and the crepe myrtle tree, I do prefer the black cherry tree because number one, it's going to give me a lot of shade as it grows larger because it is a large shade tree when it's mature. But even more important than that, it is a host plant. The black cherry tree, Pruna serotina, is a host plant to a lot of butterflies and moths. And one of its many... Um, uh, creatures that it hosts is the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail butterfly, which is one of my all-time favorite butterflies. So when I chose it, I chose it pretty much for that reason. Just really wanting to attract the butterflies, especially the swallowtails, into my garden and really wanting to give, give them shelter and food to eat. So that is why I have the black cherry tree. Now, so far, I've only found red spotted purple caterpillars on it. But hopefully someday I will find an Eastern Tiger Swallowtail caterpillar on it. I have seen an Eastern Tiger Swallowtail flying right above it and landing on it. And I don't know if it was a female and I don't know if it laid eggs or if it was just resting. But I've seen some Eastern Tiger Swallowtail activity on the tree, but I have not yet found caterpillars on it. Now, I do have a lot of birds in my garden and birds really need caterpillars to survive. So that's a whole other reason that you want to attract butterflies and their caterpillars to your garden because the caterpillars are a very important source of food for birds, specifically baby birds. So if you don't know, most baby birds in our area, um, in, in the United States in general, most baby birds have to have caterpillars to grow and turn into mature birds. So if there aren't enough caterpillars in your garden, then you might not have as many birds and you're most likely not going to have as many birds, if any, because that mama bird has got to find caterpillars and similar um, soft body insects to give her young. And she can't give them just anything and it's usually caterpillars. So. You really want to actually cultivate a habitat in your yard that um, is uh, conducive to caterpillars. So when you see little holes in your leaves and you see caterpillars, just remember that those are super important for the birds. So if you love birding and you love hearing the birds in your garden, as you can hear in my garden in this video, you'll want to plant the things that those caterpillars can eat. And if you don't know, different species of caterpillars need different host plants. They are specialists. And here is the black cherry tree, just so you get an idea of how large this tree has grown. The black cherry tree can get so tall and it can grow very quickly. So if you need shade very quickly, I suggest the black cherry tree or something similar that's native. 
Um, uh, cherry trees, native cherry trees, are on the list of keystone species. And if you don't know what a keystone species is, it's a native plant that is very important to local ecosystems. And a lot of you probably already know that oak trees are extremely important and are the most important tree. Cherry trees are not far behind though. They host hundreds of Lepidoptera species. And as you can see, this black cherry tree has beautiful bark, beautiful patterns on the bark. It is still a young tree, so it doesn't have that highly, I don't know if the word's furrowed, um, it doesn't have that highly uh, textured bark just yet, but it's starting to get that. And so it's still got its young trunk and its young bark, but this is a pink evening primrose. I'm still not fully sure if this is really native to my area. I feel like it might be native nearby, but not native here. I'm still unsure about its native status, but the butterflies love it. And I have Lanceleaf Coreopsis over there underneath that crepe myrtle, as well as bee balm, and I think I have coneflower over there too. And those are all native. I also have Gara. Um, there are lots of native species of Gara, as far as I'm aware, and my particular Gara species turns really beautiful crimson red in the fall, so I really love it. Here's some evidence that I have caterpillars eating my leaves. Um, I still, I look on this tree pretty often and I cannot find the caterpillars, but I know that they've been here because I see the little holes and same thing with my pawpaw trees out back. I check them, I see holes, I never find the caterpillars. So I think the birds are getting the caterpillars pretty quickly. <laughs> um, and I think it's just because they're desperate for it here. Um, I'm in this interesting area of the neighborhood where I live next to people who have these huge trees in their yard, mature native trees. Some are oaks, some are pines, and um, some are eastern red cedars. And so there's already these mature host plants right next door to me, on the one side of me. And then on the other side of me, my friends and neighbors next door are doing fruit trees. And then next to them, those people have a few fruit trees in their backyard, but their front area is just lawn. And then a lot of the rest of the, the neighborhood right across from me and diagonal from me is lawn mostly. But then there's some maple trees and some dogwood trees and things like that too. So I'm kind of surrounded by a mix of more mature trees and then more understory mature trees and then some lawn. So it's, it, you know, on one side of me it's more forested looking and on the other side it's just mostly short things. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. I just added some new original paintings to the shop. Go to macylou.com to check out the new pieces. I also have prints available as well as different categories of products. I have a $12 and under section and a $25 and under section as well because I believe every human being deserves to have art in their home and to feel cozy and comfortable wherever they live. I also have a contact page where you can easily get in touch with me at your convenience for art commissions and business inquiries. Just put a quick subject line such as, hey, I'd like an art commission, and then in the message section, put in detail about what type of commission you are wanting. Also, feel free to use the contact form as a way to ask any questions you may have about the art or the shop. Thanks for all of your support, no matter what form it takes. To support the channel, like the video, comment, and subscribe. You can also support my work by buying art from me at macylou.com. Thanks for watching!